I'll now call Habiba and Tabby for the FSS project. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Habiba, and this is Tabby. We are going to present the Family Support Services project. But before we dive deep into the project, I have a small question for all of you. Well, please raise your hand if you know about the Florida Statute Chapter 39 on proceedings relating to children. OK, that's quite a lot of people. Thank you. For those of you who don't, under Florida law, every resident is a mandatory reporter, mandatory reporter of child abuse, neglect, or abandonment. In a recent study conducted by US Department of Health and Wellbeing, uh, it, it, was, it was observed that children who are maltreated are nine times more likely to be involved in criminal activity, 25 times more likely to experience teen pregnancy, Due to such adverse effects and long-lasting effects, uh, we have systems in place that address these issues. In Florida, particularly, once a child is potentially identified as being maltreated, abused, abandoned, or neglected, it's referred to the Florida Department of Children and Families. In the year 2016 and 17, about 202,000 calls were forwarded, about 277,000 uh, investigations were made, and it was found out that for about 21,000 cases, DCF intervention was required. Particularly in Duval and Nassau counties, these cases are referred to Family Support Services of North Florida. Family Support Services' vision is to ensure that children is to ensure that children grow up within their own family, supported by their community, so that they are able to achieve their goals and be productive citizens. Its mission is to be leader in providing safety, sa safety and stability for all children by working with community partners in all providing, in all keeping the children safe. In, uh, in working towards its goal, it works uh, with five strategic units, the first one being preservation. In the preservation unit, the child is kept within the family, and the family is supported with a host of services to ensure that the child has a safe and stable environment. One of the clients from the preservation unit, Caroline, she says, it was the wake-up call that I needed. In case of a situation where the child is not, uh, cannot be kept with the parents, it is uh, moved on to its immediate relatives or family, family members and is passed on to the kinship care unit. Foster care is a temporary solution which provides um, child with foster families that ensure the child's emotional, uh, emotional and uh, safe, provide for a safe and uh, safe physical and emotional environment. Adoption is a more of a permanent solution where children are adopted. Uh, in Duval and Nassau counties, there are about 1,500 children waiting to be adopted. The independent living, uh, this offers services for teens and youth who are uh, beginning to, uh, who are moving towards adulthood and are looking forward to life after foster care. I'm going to talk a little about the child welfare process now. Um, as we know, once the child is identified, the, uh, it is referred to the uh, Department of Children and uh, Families, uh, which in turn refer to family support services in Duval and Nassau counties. Uh, family support services assigns a case management organization to each of this child, uh, child in need. Uh, the case management organization uh, caters to the needs of the child uh, via a purchase of services system. The request for services and goods uh, to, the, to FSS uh, via the purchase of services system, which we uh, most often call as POS system. The POS system, uh, it allows caseworkers to request for goods and services that helps children and families. Over the last five years, 49 case management units have requested for 65,000 plus 
uh, requests for services and goods. Uh, these ha there have been 381 types of services and goods uh, with uh, about 3,700 providers. Uh, I invite Tabby to talk a little more about the project. Yes. Hello. So an interesting thing that we had to tackle with this project was that we did not have the type of data that everybody else had. We had mostly financial data, which was given to us with a very interesting challenge of helping FSS develop their own ability to analyze their data within their own organization. So for this, our goals were to help them understand how to clean and prepare their data, how to use visual analytics to best represent their data and to look within it to find um, answers to the questions that they have. And finally, we are um, hoping to give them um, information to help update their POS system to better accomplish these goals. So from FSS, we received five years of financial data, which were grouped into two different reports, the outstanding report and the paid report. So the outstanding report basically housed the who, what, when, where, and why, who was requesting the services, um, what was being requested, where they were gonna go to get this service provided for them, and how much was being authorized for this service. The paid report held, housed the actual financial data that was paid out, so when somebody actually got the service fulfilled and was paid for, it would go here. So with this, there was a lot of data that wasn't represented within both reports, so we had to go through a process using our software to merge these data sources together. So we would have a full, complete data set to work with. Now after this process, we spent a considerable amount of time cleaning the data and getting it ready for visual analytics. One of our uh, main problems was working with the providers. So where are you gonna go to get your service? And for this example, imagine that there are 17 participants who are requesting school supplies from Walmart. You would expect the data to look something like this. But what we really got was something that looked more like this, where you can see Walmart is spelled maybe five different ways, and each of these different misspellings was represented as a separate provider. So when we're looking into, say, how much was Walmart actually spent or paid in the course of a year, we only got that for one of these spellings. So we had to go through a process of finding all these misspellings and correcting for them to make it look more like this. And this took us a considerable amount of time. But once we were able to fix all these and then create a few other variables for analysis, we jumped into visual analytics. So now with visual analytics, there's a lot of software out there that you can use. We chose to use Tableau. So within Tableau, you can use a lot of different things. This is an example of a static image. Everything that you want to look at is here. There is normally a table with uh, paid amounts represented, but for this presentation, we got rid of it. That way, we're not breaching any data confidentiality agreements. So with this, you, it is answering a simple question. How many providers are paid more than 50,000 per year? And by looking at this, we can see that there's actually not that many. There's about 15. And we can also see that there are only two providers that are paid this much money across all five years that we were given the data for. And finally, with this, we can see that in this past fiscal year, that only, or that the amount the providers paid this much was only three compared to much more in the past. So now this is an, one of my favorite visualizations, and this is to help FSS look into what providers they're using for which services. And everything here is very interactive. So we can see that at the very top of the service chart that is on the bottom right side of the chart, we see individual therapy. We can click on this, and this filters out everything else. So we can see the rectangle field on the bottom left side, this is called a tree map. And this shows us the providers that are being used with the rectangles representing a provider. The size of the rectangle represents how many requests are put into this provider, and the color represents the amount of money that was actually paid for this provider. So for individual therapy, we can see that there are a number of providers that service this type of request. We can also see that community behavioral is the most requested and gets paid the most for individual therapy information. And this is something that FSS can use to really go into their services. We can also see that this top banner of colorful squares at the top, you can use this to look into each individual 
case management organization. So let's say we want to look into Daniel and see what, who's providing their services and what services are they requesting. And we can see here that they're using quite a number of providers and that um, First Coast Behavioral is requested a lot and is paid a lot in the same with Jacksonville Transportation, which if we remember the prior chart, were also top providers for all five years. And finally, we move on to, these are called packed dot plots. We like to call them sunflowers because that's more fun and this is Florida. So what this is giving us the ability to do is to show multiple variables in one view. So this is a, um, each large sunflower is a fiscal year. Each small dot represents a request that was put into FSS. The size of the dot represents how much money was paid for that request, and the color represents the case management organization that serviced that request. And with this, we can see that some things changed from the 2016 and 17 fiscal year to the 2017-18 fiscal year. We can see that Jewish Family Community Service made the most requests in the 2016-17 year and also had a large amount of these big ticket items that we can see clustered in the middle of the first sunflower. Moving on to the next year, that they've actually moved to requesting less services and less of these larger items, and it's now Daniel that requests the most services. So this is something that may not have been able to be visualized before because there's so many variables in play. So these are only a few of the visualizations and dashboards that we put together for FSS. And they were able to help us come up with an array of recommendations for them. So some recommendations is building on the fact that FSS should develop their own internal process for visual analytics. That way they can make these informed decisions that they're hoping to make and be able to really understand what their data is telling them. One of our main things that we focus on is providing them with reports to help them accomplish this goal. So reports on how we built our dashboards, on how they can clean their data. Another thing that we recommend is that they can rework their POS system in very small ways to better accommodate the visual analytics, such as adding a autofill function to their provider's drop or um, column when in the POS system. So when a caseworker goes in to request a service from Walmart, Walmart pops up when they start typing it in, it will severely limit the amount of misspellings that they would receive and have to then go through and clean. And finally, we recommend that FSS share their information that they think is um, pertinent with their CMOs, that way their CMOs can use this information to make better um, decision making about where to receive their services from. So finally, we think that FSS is doing a great job. They have a great system in place to help children, but there is one link, again, that was not mentioned here, which is the fact that the child does need to be identified. And that is, again, on the fact that everybody is a mandated reporter, and it is important to know that. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to our presentations.